In the previous video we created this page which displays currently five different flags. Each of these flags being a different instance of the elements that we've created. If we explore our bow components country flags folder however, you will notice that there are a whole host of other flags available to us. And so during the course of this video we're going to expand upon the current flag elements that we've created to allow us to display all of the flags that we have access to. To do this, we're first going to replicate the stretch flag file, and we're going to call this stretch flags. Because this is going to be used to display multiple flags. If we open the file in the text editor, we can go ahead and delete a large chunk of this content, because we're not actually going to be restyling or recreating the existing flag. Just as when we were creating the stretch flag element and we used the paper toolbar inside of our element, we're going to be using the stretch flag element inside of our stretch flags element. So we're also going to need to change the ID of the flags of stretch flags, as well as changing the ID in the actual script element. We're not going to need any properties and so we can delete this section. And within our index.html file, we're also not going to have multiple copies of this element. And so we can delete all of the existing stretch flag elements and change the one remaining to stretch flags. And because we've deleted these properties, we can also delete them from here as well. As well as changing the name of the file up import to stretch flags. So if we delete the rest of this content, the first thing that we're going to want to do is to import our element. And we're obviously going to want to import the stretch flag element. Which we're going to still use within our actual template itself. Whenever you're handling large amounts of data, it's likely that you're going to be using some sort of object notation. For example, JSON. Which may be formed from the output of a database or some other means. Because this series isn't about creating JSON files or anything else data related, I've gone ahead and created a countries.json file, which contains all of the information that we're going to need about each flag that we want to display. So we have the ID, the name, and the path to the actual flag. Rather than typing all of this information yourself, this file is available on GitHub and is linked to in the description below. So now that we know that we're going to be dealing with JSON, we can go ahead and actually import that into our element. I'm going to be doing this directly rather than creating any sort of template or any sort of property to actually pass this across. But you could of course pass the actual JSON file across yourself. To actually handle the JSON file import process, we can actually use an AJAX request. If you've used JSON files in the past, you'll be probably familiar with using jQuery to import the JSON file, because this offers a very simple way to do the actual import. Polymer, however, offers us a solution to do this as well, and so we don't need to import jQuery as well. So if we use the Bower components, iron, Ajax element. We'll be able to import this JSON file automatically using Polymer's built-in JSON handler. To do this, we simply need to create a new element. Specify that we want it to automatically load the URL that we provide. We provide the URL, which is countries.json. We tell it that we want to handle it as a JSON file. And we're going to use data binding for the response. And we're going to bind that to countries. Which means that once the data is loaded, we'll be able to access it throughout the rest of this template without any difficulty. And finally we need to go ahead and end this iron ajax element. Now this obviously imports the data and we would be able to access it through 
JavaScript by typing this dot countries if we were using JavaScript to create our element. But we can use one of Polymer's strengths, which is to actually repeat the element for us automatically. So inside of our main template, we're going to create another template. And this time we're going to specify that this one is going to be DOM repeat. Which means that it's going to repeat for every element that we provide to it. We're going to pass across some items, which are obviously going to be the countries. And then everything that we pass across inside of this element is going to be repeated for each country within that list of JSON elements. And so naturally we want to use the stretch flag element here. And we want to pass across the country name. We want to pass across the country flag. As well as the country ID. Within this template, we can access these items simply by typing item.name. Because item is created automatically for us whenever we pass across items. And name is obviously inherited from the JSON file which we created. This however can get confusing. And so rather than using items, I would always recommend adding an as property here and here you can specify the name of the variable that you want to use for example we're going to use country here which makes more sense when we're talking about country names rather than item names specifying an as alias also allows us to repeat objects within this repeated object so you can nest multiple repeat elements I'm just going to go ahead and to continue to fill out this section now so that we can go ahead and actually look at what this does. So now that we've completed this section, we can go back across to our browse to have a look at what it looks like. So here's the page before we've updated to our stretch flags element. And if we reload, we'll see that all of the different flags that we have access to are already created for us. This is all inherited, of course, from the JSON file. You will, however, notice that all of the elements are aligned to the bottom of each other rather than to the top, which makes the elements look quite bad. So we can go ahead and fix that within our new element. To do that, it's simply a matter of adding a new style. And we're simply just going to say stretch flag and we're going to apply vertical align to text top. Jumping back across to our browser and refreshing again will of course update the page style for us. And now we can see that all of the flags are properly aligned and the entire page looks a whole lot better. Now we're not going to go into any detail about it in this video. But Polymer also does include the ability to have conditional statements. If you're creating an element which will have different abilities for different types of users, for example, if an admin user was to see the element, they would have an edit button, but non-users wouldn't have the edit button. You could include this all within a single element. With a conditional element displaying or hiding the edit button accordingly, over this in the previous video we've talked about creating elements and we've done so in a not very reusable manner. For example if we wanted to reuse these elements within different projects we wouldn't be able to at the moment because they are tied directly into this project. Ideally you would want to create a github repository for each and every element that you create so that you can incorporate them in a modular manner. And this has been a big problem especially in the pre-release versions of Polymer. 
In the next video we're going to look at some of the emerging best practice for developing elements so that they can be used in a reusable manner. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that.